Good evening, it's Valerie Ling here, clinical psychologist and the director founder for the Centre for Effective Living. Just coming to you live today from my home um, office that has been recently newly set up. I hired my daughter to set it up for me and paid her what I thought was the, uh, the wage that she uh, should get. <laughs> She's done a fantastic job. I've got to remember to pay her. Um, I thought I would just connect with my um, group or this page because uh, over the over the year particularly it has grown and I may not have come up and said hello uh, in, 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 in sort of getting to know everybody and I just thought I would uh, come on live and actually tell you a little bit um, about my story and my journey if you are interested. Hello, are you joining me live? I'm about to tell you the story of how I got to be here doing these sorts of things, um, even though sometimes I actually really would much rather not come on live and be public. It all starts uh, in, oh, I suppose in the 90s, really. I was about um, age, I don't know, I was in my 20s. And um, I had this idea that people seem to be really, really busy. Uh, this was a long time, this was 20 years ago, and it seemed like people were running out of time. And at the time I was working at, it, it, with a consultancy and we build for our time. <laughs> Everything was actually been utilized for your time. Like it was just dollar and cents for your time. And I thought, wow, time is really expensive and we seem to be running out of it. And I had this idea then, um, I remember sitting around with my with some friends, I had resigned um, at that point because I decided that the consulting life was not for me and I told my boss that um, I was going to resign and not go to another job and take six months of no money. I said I won't have any money given to me, I'm just going to go and discover what it is that really, really um, is my passion. Um, I don't want to be paid for it because that way it would be like this purest experience like oh found it <laughs> and it, i thought to myself if there was one thing that i would love to do is i would actually love to gather um a bunch of people at that point in time i think in my head it was a bunch of women together and if we worked as a collective we could actually create what i called the 25th hour that was my business idea at that point, right? If I got someone who was good with the, with bookkeeping, if I got someone who was good at writing, if I got someone who was good at this, blah, 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 we could actually create a holistic service and give somebody else a, the 25th hour, as in the extra hour. Um, around that time as well, um, we were living in Singapore, and um, in Singapore, you can buy hamsters. I have since discovered coming to Australia that you cannot get hamsters here, at least I do not think you can. And um, for some reason, we had four. I have no idea why, but we did. We had four. We had two big ones and we had two little ones. And our hamsters lived in this, um, in these cages, like at, you know, at the, you probably still can get these things these days. Um, they were pretty fantastical. Like you could add these tubes and um, these connections and it was like double story and things like that. But the funny thing is, even though we provided and built these environments for them, they just went on the wheel, this wheel, they just, you know, got on the hamster wheel and they just went around and around and around furiously and noisily, right? Just in the middle of the night. And as I was going through this search for meaning and, you know, it's not about the money and I don't want to work in consulting anymore and all of this, I just watched the hamsters on the wheel. And one day it occurred to me that I was a hamster on a wheel. <laughs> just going around and around and generating, you know, using up all this energy and being, uh, you know, so focused but not actually really getting anywhere. And the hamster on the wheel uh, really pushed me to get off the wheel because in my mind, my hamsters had no idea of the universe that we had created for them because all they could see was the wheel. And that's all they were trying, just the wheel. They didn't go upstairs, they didn't go downstairs. Um, so that was the first thing that happened was the hamsters kind of got me thinking. Then, uh, I 
I retrained, went into clinical psychology and things like that. And in uh, 2009, in 2009, I found myself, uh, oh, hang on, had kids already. Yeah, I had kids, 2009. Um, it, would, it would have been very difficult for me to have shared this then. Um, but it's, it's, it's easier for me to talk about it now. Um, I was pregnant with my third pregnancy and had prepared that, okay, I'm doing the mum thing again. Um, the way that I do the mum thing, I tend to like to take some time off work and stay at home and things like that. And I resigned from my job. I said, okay, I'm going to be resigning from my job. And I did. I resigned from my job. I lost that pregnancy and in 2009 found myself feeling very very lost because I like what am I supposed to do do I go back do I not go back it was another one of those moments to actually evaluate and in 2009 I decided I came up with this phrase um, it was called free falling right free falling for me meant that I was going to attempt to not have any concrete ideas about what I should do, no concrete ideas about what I must do, but take some time obviously to heal from what I've been through and also to just throw, you know, just experience life and to uh, free fall for a little while and just kind of float um, with the winds and not be afraid. And so free falling was a very important concept to me at that time and found me actually um, starting my very, very first business. Uh, when I was in my 20s and I had joked, well, I wasn't joking, I thought it was serious. Um, I even went and talked to a venture capitalist when I was 21. Um, the idea was a, uh, a coffee bar, <laughs> this idea that I could set up a bar with coffee. Anyways, um, I had come up with the name when I was in my 20s and found myself in this situation and thought, well, okay, this is the time that we're going to do it. And it was not to create the 25th hour. I actually found myself um, in a forensic situation, not me, but providing forensic services. And that was to go into um, juvenile um, in Singapore, they, they're, they're called homes, to assess the uh, young offenders, because I, you know, there was a theory, and it was a, it was at that point in time an emergent theory that perhaps many of our young offenders actually had learning difficulties, and so we, um, I set up a little business for myself and offered my services to do that. Now over the years that has changed, and I seem to just can't escape being self-employed, even though I've tried very hard to be employed. It's not because I don't want to be employed, but somehow I just keep finding myself in these spaces and today i was reflecting on quite apart from the fact that i thought oh i really should say hello and connect with everybody um, in terms of you know where my story starts but today i got to a point where I, very often i will do this i call it my plan b when you get a bit a bit um over the whole being employed yourself self-employed or, or running a business um, because it, it, it can be a rather uh, lonely experience in that you want another person to understand like exactly what's going on in your brain and what you're experiencing and I, I try desperately to explain and then you know it just sounds like I'm talking about my work all the time and so my plan B is you know in my head I don't know if you have a plan B I would love to know my plan B is to um, have my own bakery and <laughs> just invent the one thing that's going to change the world, the one baked good that's going to change the world. Now, I don't dwell on the plan B for too long because I do know you have to be up at like, I don't know, 2 a.m. to make this dream a reality. So let's just say um, it's a nice thought to have. And I finally, you know, as I was going through my day, thought, you know what? The thing is, just like with exercise, uh, we don't have to always feel motivated. The thing is, we show up. And here's my, I suppose, uh, the thing that I would like to share with you. Um, you just show up. Whatever life throws at you, 
whatever circumstances that you find yourself detouring, trying to figure out, the thing is we show up. We show up for the people that we love. We show up for the people that we serve. Uh, and we show up. Uh, and, and when we do, it, it's courage. It's commitment. It's a statement that says, we'll just keep going. Things don't always get a plan. Detours are more normal and more common. Not everybody's going to understand what we do or why we do. Not everybody's going to approve either. But when we know why we're doing what we're doing, whether it's in caring for someone, whether it's in uh, you know being a student or, or whatever it is, and we know why we do what we do, we turn up, we show up, we commit courage and conviction. And that is a fantastic way to live. I think even when you don't feel motivated and you feel a little bit jaded or you feel a little bit tired. So that was my landing thought today and um, sharing with you where I came from in, 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 in this space and hoping to connect with you. Maybe you've experienced this yourself and had similar thoughts. Would love to hear from you. Good night to my mysterious watcher. I do not know who you are because I cannot refresh my computer to see who you are. Take care.